So we're doing related rates. We're going to derive this equation in respect to time. When you derive in respect to time, it looks something like this. Derive y in respect to time. You're doing basically implicit. And you're also deriving the equation in respect to time. So again, you're deriving both sides in respect to time. When you do that, this simply becomes dy dt. When you derive this in respect to time, well, the 2 kind of comes out. Um, or you can distribute the 2, however you want to see it. I'm actually going to distribute the 2. This em ends up becoming 4x, right? Distribute the 2. 2 times this 2x times 2 is 4x. And do you understand that becomes dx dt? <coughs> minus 3 because this becomes a negative sorry minus 6 because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 and negative 6 x derived is negative 6 dx dt okay now if I simplify this I simply have dy dt equals 4x minus 6 dx dt now, why do I have dx dt here? GCF, except I put it in the back instead of the front. Do you understand they both have a dx dt? So I can just put it once. Now, what you're going to have to do is, technically this brown row right here, you're never going to show that. It's a waste of your time. If you do dx dt this whole thing and it's all x's, don't worry about putting dx dt every single time. Just do it once at the end. It's a lot quicker. If you want to, again, you can do the dx dt each time you derive x, but it's always going to have a GCF in the end that just pops it out to the edge. And we normally put it at the end, not the beginning. You can do either. Okay, this is my formula. I now plug in according to what they give me. I want to find dy dt, so I want to find this when x is 3. So if you use this equation, dy dt equals 4 times, what's x? 3 minus 6. And all of that times, what's dx dt? 2. Now, it's kind of important you put it in parentheses, isn't it? Because if you just put dx dt at the end, aren't you only going to multiply the 6 by dx dt? You just got to be careful. Looks like 12 minus 6, so that looks like 6, 6 times 2 is 12. Now, how would you say this answer in words? This is saying, for this equation, y is changing at a rate of 12 units per whatever time you're dealing with. When x is 3, if x is changing at 2 units per whatever time. So if we're given this change of x and given this x value, this is the change of y given this equation to begin with. Okay, here we want dx dt. We're given dy dt. So go to here, dy dt is 5. x is 1. And we want dx dt. Well, please see the difference. We plug in the values that we want. So we plug in what we have, and this is what we want to find out. So that becomes 4. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So how do you get rid of the negative 2? You, you divide both sides by negative 2. So it looks like dx dt is equal to negative 5 over 2. Again, what this one's saying is x is changing at negative 5 over 2 if the y is changing at this rate and x is 1. These have applicable situations which you'll see over time. Okay. Number 8. We want dy dt given this information. So we derive this. So what you'll notice is y 
derivative of y is dy dt. The derivative of sine is cosine x, but we also need dx dt. Chain rule, drive the x inside. Derivative of x inside is dx dt. Remember, if it was derived in respect to x, it would be y prime equals cosine x, x prime, which is 1. But we're deriving in respect to time. There's my formula. So all we're going to do is look at our information. We want this. So we want dy dt. So looking at the formula, we put cosine x. x looks like it's pi over 4. Um, dx dt looks like it's 2. These are actually really simple problems once you get the hang of it. OK. Cosine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So it looks like dy dt is equal to sorry, the square root of 2 over 2 times 2, because this is square root of 2 over 2. So our answer for dy dt looks like it is the square root of 2.